What's up guys, Mopar Man here, and I got an another little fun project uh, that I've taken on for you guys. I, I may have mentioned in previous videos, but um, I am converting my manual seats to um, power seats. I should actually say seats, I'm sorry, let me correct myself. It's a manual seat to a power seat, which is my driver's side seat that I'm doing. Um, as most of you that have a RAM know that the driver's side seat the cloth tends to tear very easily um, probably for most of us that do the tushy scoop out of the truck uh, I'm guilty of it I know I am um, I bought a new seat cushion and a foam seat from Amazon it was a uh, fairly cheap I'm going to show it to you guys here That's the uh, seat with the seat cushion. I actually use the hog rings. Um, there's not a whole lot of guys out there that, um, you know, when they've shown the seat replacement, a lot of them say, oh, well, use zip ties. Well, that's all great, but I'd rather go with the hog rings because they seem a little more secure. Um, but my little warning is that when you're using the hog rings, you either definitely need a second person to help you because you got to push the foam down in order to squeeze the rings together it's a bit of a pain in the butt so um, if you're not comfortable doing it real upholstery shop that's the way to go <sighs> I ordered I'm going to show you the seat bottom now I ordered the electric seat bottom from eBay uh, paid about 250 for it and it's you know I don't know what exact year or model truck it came off of because the guy listed it as from like an 09 to a 2018 not sure how accurate that is but I know it works for my year truck I was looking at it for a little bit I had to you know really zoom in on the photos look at all the connectors look at you know look at everything that was involved all the motors um, he labeled this seat as a memory seat with the um, uh, that was also power so you know you got your forward back your up down lift um, and f um, when I got to see uh, something I actually realized is that it's a cooling seat also because that's a that's the fan for the cooling uh, um, when you have the cooling seats installed uh, I'm not going to use it uh, I did think about taking it off but I'm just gonna leave it in uh, a coworker of mine mentioned a good idea was to just run power and ground to it so you could actually have it but I'm not I'm not too sure how the cooling seats work I'm not sure if there's a vent or some kind of tube that's supposed to run through the seat that makes it cool obviously I would imagine that this might be better for better for leather than cloth which is uh, what I have I have cloth seats I'm happy with the cloth seats I'm not really crazy about the leather uh, something I didn't realize that I will do later on in the video is I didn't realize that the back seating over here was, had its own motors. I thought this this motor that I'm looking at here was the motor that made the seat recline back and forth, and that's not the that's not how it works. There's actually two motors or one motor in here somewhere in here and this all doesn't exist and it that's what makes the seat go back and forth so I ordered the seat back from the same guy um, for a cheaper price since I already purchased the bottom from him he gave me a bit of a discount on it and um, it works so I'm gonna show you what I did so far and we're gonna go from there so the first thing you want to do when removing this seat is you want to disconnect power and or ground. You could do both. I just did ground. I disconnected the ground. This yellow wire, I believe, is for your airbags. You want to disconnect the ground because you don't want the you don't want the seat if you you know remove all four bolts when you tip the seat back. You don't want the this, uh, if there's any sensors in the seat to think that the truck is rolling over and then blow out the airbags so I disconnected the ground first then I disconnected all my electrical cables don't worry about these blue wires they are literally for my air compressor I've, I found power 
uh, on ground here for the uh, air compressor and I run it to a switch. So don't worry about the blue wires, that's just me having a little makeshift switch to make the air compressor work and have a, you know, a switch. I'm going to mount it properly later. Um, so disconnect this first, then I disconnected this. Uh, if you have manual seats like me, this is this this has nothing connected to it. It's not really useful. Um, this piece is mounted under the seat, so you want to make sure you kind of get everything disconnected. The seat belts all come out with the whole seat. Then you got the four bolts here: one, two, three, and then four here. Uh, preferably an air gun or an electric impact. I would say to remove them because they are really tight and then you just kind of uh, what I did is I just lifted the whole seat moved it as close as possible to the steering wheel you want to recline the seat to the most forward the seat back to the most forward position and then you're able to just literally carry it out and then what I did is uh, just have a little table here I propped it up on the table and then I started disassembling everything. As you can see, I um, took off the plastic. Uh, the plastic, the big plastic, and the plastic on the other side, there's a, once you remove this, which is the first thing you should do, there's a little screw here on this side and that side. Remove those, and then the whole plastic piece will come out. For your manual uh, seat adjuster, um, which you'll have a handle right about here on your old one, Take a, a screwdriver or some kind of like, uh, if you have the plastic pry, pry bar clips for like automotive interiors, put it on this side and start kind of doing this motion, wedging while you're pulling on this side a little bit and it just literally comes out. There's no screws holding it on. And then you're able to remove all the plastic and everything that you gotta be, uh, that you're gonna be doing. Um, now, the cool part is with some research I've done is your, your manual uh, seat is also built for the is also built for the buttons and everything to clip in here. So I ordered the bezel that fits right in here and everything comes together that way. You just screw down stuff and put everything together. So I ordered the bezel, I ordered this seat switch and also I'm going to show you here. I also ordered the memory switch. Uh, I got all this off of uh, eBay. The wholesale sites want a little more money. Uh, eBay was a lot cheaper and it was free shipping. So here's the memory uh, switch seat function. This is the... Uh, now, when you order the seat bottom, here's the thing. When you go to like a, a wholesale site, like for example, I use BAM Wholesale Parts, I believe it's called they have a bunch of, they have about three of these seat, um, they call them sweet seat switches. And you have to look because in the seat switch, there's so many wires. Um, and I didn't know which one I needed. I had to wait for this one to come in because as you can see, this seat switch is four wires. So when you look at this module, this has four pins on it. And that's the one I needed. I, so I wanted to make sure I ordered the right one. And he put this as a memory seat, so obviously that's the memory portion right there. Uh, there's probably some extra connectors that I won't need, but um, here's your seatbelt. Your actual seatbelt connector is here. Your seatbelt just unplugs, I, and then you know it unbolts from right here, unbolts from here, and then you just bolt on the next one. And this is for your if you have a, a split, split bench seat like mine with a little jumper seat in the middle, then this is that seat belt. You're gonna have to unbolt it here and bolt it on the other one. This one had all the modules and everything underneath, so it was worth the investment. Um, you can get the seat bottom from the wholesaler, but I'm just not sure what the part number and everything would be. So finding this on eBay, I you know, figuring my year model it would work. And then accordingly, I went and once this once this came in, I could see how many wires this was. I ordered the seat switch, I ordered the memory switch, and then I ordered the bezel that goes in here. 
in gray. And you can find out if it's uh, uh, gray or tan by just taking the part numbers from the wholesale site, plugging it into like eBay, and it'll usually pull up the actual part depending if it's a private seller, and it'll show you the the color, so you know, okay, this part number is related to this color. So, um, On the seat cushion, there is a um, there is what I'd like to call a, uh, an indent for the little. I'm gonna show you in a minute. A little bar back here. You got to make sure that that the cushion sits over that on that bar, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to pull it. What helps sometimes is that that's why I have it on this bench at least this high because you can tilt it back and lay it down and do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna show you guys here. That's the bar I'm talking about. So the seat, as you can see, is indented and you know try to pull it back as much as possible. I don't remember, this is like a new cushion, so it's like. And if it helps, have a little hammer handy. Front just clips on like that, as you can see. And you have the sides that clip in over here, and then you have this bottom piece that clips in here. Now, uh, you're gonna have to pull it a little bit. go 
bottom piece is in, bottom piece clips in over here. Take your time. This would uh, normally clip in over here and then I'd find the holes where I could push all these together. But I'm actually going to probably leave it loose seeing as I'm going to have to remove this seat again. And uh, that's one less thing for me to do is to unclip all of that. But this back piece does uh, clip in probably right about here. That's what holds the bottom cover on. But once again, I'm not going to put these on. I have to pull this this all back out so it's just gonna go in the truck and sit there and like I said I don't drive my all that much so I don't see the uh
I did, uh, if I didn't mention that, I did test the, um, I did test to make sure the all elect electrics in the, on the seat worked. So I just put it in without the cushion on and I plugged in the, uh, the seat, seat switch and then I hooked up my negative battery cable and it worked out perfectly fine. Just went back and forth and all that good stuff. So. <sighs> this seat isn't exactly perfect, or the cushion is, but I'm trying. And the tough thing is trying to get this side clips back. I'm going to show you how I got this side on. This side's a bit of a challenge because there's a piece of metal here where the motor is. And really, this has to be down further here. So what I did is I took this piece off here and kind of flipped this back and smushed it down enough to get this to clip in. And then I brought this back over and put it on. So everything is everything is on and tucked in now and should be good. So um, also don't forget this comes with a little that little thing to hold your seatbelt in. You know, slip your seatbelt back through this this stretches, so that's not hard. But yeah, that's this is the underside, everything there, that's the module. Um Funny enough, this must have come off uh, like a fully loaded vehicle because I can see ignition, not used, the pedal switch. So, obviously, you know, if I ever wanted to put motors for the pedals to move back and forward, that'd be, uh, that's there, but I'm not. I just want the electric seat. That's all I care about. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so, I showed you earlier in the video doing the seat cushion and putting the, you know, switching over to the bottom seat and all. I uh, have gotten my rear seat bracket just came in and we're gonna we're gonna take off my old seat back and transfer it to this one. I'm just removing the uh, plastic inside pieces. I don't need these pieces, I'm just going to throw them out. Put this down for right now. I removed my old seat from the truck and pop it up here on the table. Alright, um, so we got the seat out, and uh, let's see. Oh, that's the connector for that. Alright, 
We're going to start by removing this uh, side panel here where the seat switch and all is. Um, I got an idea how to mount you guys. Alright, so we're going to start by removing this panel right here. Once again, if you've seen some of my other videos, you want to get yourself a good uh, clip tool. These little plastic panel tools are great for removing interiors. And you want to start on this side because it, it kind of swings in on this end. So, there you go, see? And then you just simply unplug the seat switch. Alright, see which stays there. Most of you are wondering what this wire might be out hanging out here. When I purchased the bottom electric seat, it actually is probably off of a um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh like a higher um uh, model of RAM fifteen hundreds, or it could even be a twenty five hundred. Uh, I'm unsure. The guy listed it for like pretty much oh nine all the way to nineteen, which I don't think this bottom seat track works all the way till a 19 I believe from 2013 could be 2013 or maybe 2014 onwards the uh, seat track wiring and all is completely different uh, uses some sort of like I guess some kind of high speed uh, CAN network or something from what I've read online but your 09's to about could be to about 13 or 14 mine's is a 2012 um, they use, you know, they use a simple wiring. So I, when I bought before I bought this seat, I really took a close look at the wiring, and made sure that it worked for my truck. And it did. It completely worked. Before I put the seat cushion on and everything, I actually just put the thing, the bottom seat in there, and I plugged it in and I hooked up the battery and I was able to use the seat. You know, I had this. I ordered the seat switch at the time, and I was able to go make it go back and forth. Back to the original question was, you were probably wondering what this is. This is for a memory seat. That's what this seat is. It, it's a memory seat, and it's also got the cooling feature. So that's what makes me think it came off of like a higher-end kind of RAM. Um, I did buy the memory suite uh, seat switch, and uh, I bought the Alpha OBD app and the OBD2 connection uh, for the you know for your where you plug in under the dash and I tried programming it for heated I mean for memory seats but it didn't work um, I tried you know because I went into the beat uh, the body control module um, and accessed all of everything that this truck could be capable of and I tried the mem you know act showing that it had the memory switch placing the memory switch on the driver's seat everything and it didn't take so I'm not sure if I did something wrong or just uh, it's something that the dealership has to do. But I'm okay. I don't need the memory seat switch. Like I said, I don't really drive this truck a whole lot. So moving the seat back and forth is is, is uh, not going to kill me. So we're going to remove a, a, a screw that's here. That is an 8 millimeter, I believe. So, uh, uh, I guess I'm turning it be easier. You gotta un unclip. You have to unclip this part from underneath, which is easier to do if you just tilt it back on a table like I have. There's a screw here. There's a screw here. You gotta pull them out, and then the panels on the side will just pop out.
I'm sorry if you see my back a lot. I'm trying to uh, show you what I'm doing and staying out of the the camera. Quite a bit. Now, uh, of course, in the last. So I'm gonna just easily a little bit of muscle. Pry this off. Okay. Be careful because you can't pry from the front because this this piece clips into the bracket right here. So you have to pry from the back first and then kind of slide forward. So all these panel pieces I'm just going to keep on the ground. See if we have out of the way, make sure you don't step on them. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Um, when I replace the seat bottom, you have to transfer your two um, seat belt buckles over, you know, your driver's side, and this is, this, this, this buckle is if you have the, the jumper seat in between. So. Oh, I'm sorry, there is one more screw here. I do apologize. You have to kind of push this down and... Also, what would help you know, this project, get yourself one of these little metal trays. Okay. Now, we're going to remove um, these two screws here. There's two on this side, two on that side, and this whole seat back will come right out. Alright, these are 13s. And uh, they are tight, so you may want to get yourself uh, an impact gun, either cordless or air if you have it. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I uh, didn't think that through, but uh, luckily there's no heavy electronics in my back seat, so that just completely came off. And that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this whole seat box on the ground for right now, and we're gonna deal with the seat back portion. So I'm going to remove my I'm going to remove my headrest. Keep that safe somewhere. And uh, you and I are going to take this journey together. I'm going to remove this. Somewhere along the lines of the zipper tab broke off on my seat. So on that side, let's see. So on this side.
Alright guys, uh, so I ended up having to drill just uh, another hole for the top bolt on the SRS system so it would fit right and then the original hole that I drilled was also used so a little modification a little modification you know take my advice if you're ever going to do this type of project just try to find the replacement seats all together Find the whole replacement seat that's already done. It has the airbags, it has the uh, you know, whatever you want that you're looking to do. <clears throat> I'm lucky this is just a small modification. sure I'm not having to wire the lumbar control into into here. Make a the Never mind guys, I found it, just took a little digging, sorry about that. The connector was hidden, so. I got that in, this is, uh, I'm gonna finish buttoning this up, so now I know there's nothing. together. Now I can actually start putting this seat cover back on. things I'm going to do before I go crazy is put the uh, tabs that hold the headrest back in.
We need a pair of needle nose for this. Now comes the fun part where you got to put this back together. I am a dummy. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm gonna have to take this just apart again. And some of you probably know why. Because I did not run the wiring back. Don't you want to rush to try to get a little too excited? There we go. There we go. So, I'm going to reclip my wiring where it needs to be. Now this was under my seat somewhere, so that's all fine and dandy. Pretty sure this one will we'll make it work. So we'll fit in it. Now, here's the fun part. It's trying to buckle this back together again.
All right, so you got the gist of it. I'm going to um, pause the video here, try to get this back together because this is going to take me some time. It's very tight, very fighting, fighting me a lot. And uh, we'll resume when I'm about to put this back together in the seat. So uh, I got the seat cushion back on. Um, preferably do it on the floor. It's a lot easier than trying to... Uh, Trying to do it on this table. All right. Now we're gonna put the uh, seat bottom on. And then we'll uh, button everything back up together. Try to get this lined up. All right. Uh, hmm. I'll try to get one bolt in. May have to do it the other way. May have to lay this. May have to lay this. Let's do this upright. Just want to get one bolt started on each side so it doesn't look down. That's in there, that's in there. Try to get these lined up as best as we can. And I will tighten them down. Follow my video in reverse. It will, uh, and that's how you'll put it back together. It's not uh, really complex or complicated.
turn that in. We have uh, this big screw. We're gonna put these pieces on. There you go, you guys can see that. Just kind of give it a good swing. I'm gonna put the screw in the back first and then I'll put the eight millimeter bolt back in. Lumbar switch will just clip into this. Right. Oh, there's a little notch up here. You gotta, you gotta just watch for. I'm right, gonna plug our seat switch back in. Okay, that's 
together. Now we can put this back in. Alright, last but not least, we put the seat on its back. thing we're going to do is pull this out. folks that's it i'm going to install the seat and uh, show you that everything works all right give you guys a preview everything works it's all back in see let's move it back it does the up this does the down and now it moves back and the lumbar works I don't know if you can hear it.